On him, one of the most dramatic and gallant feats of this war has been performed by the first Allied Airborne Army. These men did not fail. In the nine days and nights they fought, they held the Nazis back. Thanks to their courageous sacrifice, Nijmegen Bridge, undamaged, is in Allied hands. first thought to me was that, you know, we've been playing as soldiers, this is real, you know, because your fighting is to stay alive. That's the point, and there's no going back but to get down there. The only time it starts sinking in, when you see how many planes are, the, the whole place seems to be studded with planes. And then you think, oh God, this is, this is not just one off. But nobody seemed to be worried. Yes, it was for something, because I've no doubt that Nazism wasn't going to stop. It had to be stopped and had to be gotten rid of. Do you know one of the things that stuck in my mind? I wasn't married, I had no children, I had nobody to lose. The, the danger was there, the idea of throwing your body out of an, an aircraft at 8,000 to 800 feet wouldn't appeal to most people. People cannot understand the, the ferocity that overtakes you almost a madness, justifiable madness, but you respond to what the requirements are. And if it means you've got to shoot somebody, you shoot somebody, you know. Mark at Garden, we didn't have too much to say in that. We'd heard rumours before we left Britain that there were Germans and tanks in the woods round Ginkle Heath, all tucked in. And when we were coming down, we saw them, these snipers taking aim, but uh, you know, that, that's war, isn't it? And uh, when we came down all right, no problem. The thing that does go through your mind is you hope the chute opens. I mean, that's, that's a natural thing. And, um, I was fortunate enough that, for me, it always did. I know it sounds ridiculous. When I was captured at the time, I was absolutely furious. You know, immediately, plans were forming. When I heard we were going to Paris, I thought, well, that's it. If you can't escape there, you know, you're never going to make it. I knew I'd been hit. As I came down, I felt this oof. And when we got down, <laughs> I wasn't allowed to go to the hospital in Arnhem because the Germans had taken that over. I had to go to a temporary hospital in Oosterbeck, which was 12 miles away. And I was there for about five days until the Germans decided to take us into Germany as prisoners. The regiment is what it was all about. You know, you joined and that's got to mean something. And, and that's the way that it is. I, I'm proud of it. I'm, I know I was pushed into it. I didn't volunteer. But I'm proud of having done something about it. It's part of our history, isn't it? That uh, nothing came on, to us on the plate. We had to do something about it. There's just one thing. I mean, if freedom is it peril? You've got to do something, because it'll go. 
the air you breathe is because people are lying in cemeteries all over the place. That's what it means. You know, you don't have it as a God-given right. You've got to fight for it. And I would, yes, I would.